Hi kids, it's Mr. Iribitz. Before we get started with Alphas and the Underdogs, I want to point something out to you. Yesterday, I gave you an assignment. I said, listen to Elvis and the Underdogs, minutes 20 to 30. And I said, now that we've listened to 30 minutes, I want you to open this Padlet and write in what your favorite part of the story is so far. And I said, my favorite part was the way that Benji speaks. And what I meant by that was I just like his tone and his personality. His personality is very funny to me and I can relate to it. Um, so I really enjoy the book for that reason. But what I'm upset about is over here when I look at the padlets that you created um, you did great those kids who did it but there's a lot of you that did not do it in fact if I count them I have two four six eight ten eleven answers or eleven kids who responded to this that's less than half the class so I need you to make sure you go in and do this today and I also need you to make sure that you go in, um, that if you don't know how to do it, that you come to me and ask me for help. Because uh, in my opinion, it's not fair that I put in the work of trying to get this all set up for you and then for you to just say, oh, well, you know what, I'm not gonna do it. And I understand some of you probably legitimately forgot and that's okay, but I think you need to learn the skill of doing what you need to do right away because some of you probably listened to the story and you were like oh you know what i'll just do it later i'm going to move on with my day and that's pretty normal but i need you to get in the habit of finishing it right now because most of us myself included if i say i'm going to do it later oftentimes i don't i'll forget and that sometimes gets me in trouble too so please before you start the story i want you to pause your video and go back and fill in this padlet so that i have 26 responses up here and if you don't know how to do that i fully expect you to come to me and ask me otherwise i will probably be calling you on go guardian wondering why you haven't finished it so having said all of that and done my little teacher slash dad lecture i'm going to pause it I'm going to give you time to go do it because um, you're going to pause it. And then there's not going to seem like there was any pause because I'm going to start the story. But hopefully you listen and follow directions. And if you have not done this, you go back and do it. And if you have, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. So I'm sorry you had to listen to this. But if you haven't, go do it. All right. I'm pausing now. And then shortly I will start the actual story. The way I see it, my life is now divided into two sections. Before the brain tests, which is everything you just heard about, and after the brain tests, which is what I'm going to tell you about now. My EEG was... For some reason, I had a little bit of a glitch there, so I don't know if it recorded or not, but I'm starting again right now, and we'll try it this way. Why? Two... The way I see it, my life is now divided into two sections. Before the brain tests, which is everything you just heard about, and after the brain tests, which is what I'm going to tell you about now. My EEG was totally normal. My PET scan, which checked out my brain cells, was totally normal. And I guess it's always third time's the charm, because it was my MRI that came back almost perfect, but not quite. Dr. Helen showed my parents and me the digital images of my brain that the MRI had captured. She said that the MRI was the most detailed of all the tests. Which one was the MRI again? The one where you had to shave my head? The one with all the colors? Or the one where I went into the giant bread machine? Bread machine. Anyway, on that scan, Dr. Helen said she'd found a tiny spot, which could be a lesion or could be nothing at all. At the mention of the word lesion, my mom started breathing a little heavy, but Dr. Helen nipped her worries right in the bud. I'm telling you right now that all those terrible things you're thinking are not true, so don't go there. My mom nodded. She completely believed in Dr. Helen, and so did I. 
She said for now there was no way to tell if it was that tiny little spot that caused my episode, but it might have. She said seizures were far more common than we realize, and that most children who have seizures in their youth outgrow them as they get older. So I'm going to have another one? Dr. Helen shook her head. Benji, we don't know that for sure. But for now, since the tests were inconclusive, we have to label it as idiopathic epilepsy. What's idiotic epilepsy? It's idiopathic epilepsy, which means epilepsy of an unknown origin. But I faint all the time. Why is this any different? Benji, hush. Let Dr. Helen talk. So are you saying Benji has epilepsy? That sounds serious. Is this why he faints a lot? No, I'm not saying that at all. But what happened at school wasn't a fainting spell. Benji had a major seizure, and that's much more serious. Now, what I'm most concerned about in Benji's case is that during his seizure, he hit his head on the floor hard enough to get a mild concussion. Well, I joked, if it happens again, I'll get my 10th punch in my hospital punch card, and I'll get a prize. Benji, you were very lucky to be at school when it happened, so you were able to get immediate attention. But what if it happens again and you aren't at school or at home with your mom? What if it happens when you're crossing the street or at the mall or swimming or at home alone? Well, if it happened somewhere else, I guess I'd fall down. But if I was swimming, I... Then I stopped talking. I understood what she was trying to tell us. My mom got her point too because she started doing that short, quick breathing she does when she starts getting upset. And she also pulled me into her arms and squeezed me hard. So, my dad asked Dr. Helen, what should we do? Well, normally in such cases, we put Benji on an anti-seizure medication just for a while, so we could make sure it didn't happen again. But Benji isn't a good candidate for the standard drug therapies, mainly because his asthma medication may cause an adverse reaction. And this is the exact moment my life changed forever. Dr. Helen opened a box and pulled out a green helmet. What the heck is that? I shouted. My mom shushed me and told me to listen to Dr. Helen. Benji, this is a padded safety helmet, which will protect your head if it happens again. It also contains a transmitter that signals for help if the need arises. I'm going to ask you to wear it for a while. You mean like now? Yes, but I'm going to want you to keep wearing it. You mean for the rest of the time I'm in the hospital? Yes, and then I'm going to want you to keep wearing it after that. You mean you want me to wear it like all the time? I could barely breathe. No way, not a chance, never, ever, ever gonna happen. And just in case I'm not being clear, no, thank you. Even if you'd been there, you wouldn't have believed this thing. It looked like the world's ugliest bicycle helmet, only much much worse. It covered my whole forehead and the entire back of my head too. Plus it was made of ugly green foam and it had ugly green straps that buckled under my chin. Basically it was a disaster. It was way worse than that new kid pulling his laptop bag through the halls on wheels. Billy Thompson would drop that kid like a hot potato and set his sights right back on me. I doubted I'd even make it through a whole day alive. And what's worse, I was sure more kids would make fun of me, too. There would be no more flying under the radar with this thing. Mom, I am not wearing that thing. No way. Please don't make me. For the first time in a long time, my mom was speechless. So Dr. Helen continued. Benji, I know it doesn't look great, but it will protect your head in case you have another episode. And that's really the most important thing here. I don't care if I have another episode. I'm not wearing that thing. Not today, not ever. Mom, you can't make me wear it. I won't wear it. And you know why this is happening, don't you? It's because I lost my lug nut. Dr. Helen looked confused. You're what? Benji, this has nothing to do with the lug nut. How do you know? Benji, it'll turn up. I haven't had a chance to look for it since you've been in the hospital. It could be in the car somewhere. She looked at Dr. Helen and explained, It's his lucky charm. 
I had it right before I had my episode at school, and now I don't know where it is. It probably got swept up by the janitor, and now my entire life is going down the toilet. Stop worrying about it. Your dad will get you another one, won't you, honey? Well, it's not that simple, because like I said, it was made specifically for that particular rocket, and they're not... My mom interrupted him. Everyone stop talking about the lug nut! I don't care about the lug nut! What I do care about is finishing our conversation with Dr. Helen, because I'm sure she's very busy saving lives, and I don't want to take up too much of her time. So, Dr. Helen, do you really think this is necessary? I mean, normally anything you say we would do, but Benji does have a point. It's pretty unattractive. There is one other option, but I'm not sure, Dr. Helen said. What is it? Just tell me. I almost got down on my knees. I was that desperate. There are specially trained therapy dogs that could... Before Dr. Helen could even finish her thought, my mom cut her off. Absolutely not. Benji is allergic to dogs, and I have white carpets in the living room. Mom, please, let Dr. Helen finish. Dr. Helen told us therapy dogs are used for people with epilepsy and other brain disorders. The dogs know when an episode is about to come, and they know exactly how to get the person to safety and to also call for help. She said the dogs are expensive, but she was pretty sure she could make a few calls and help us find one if we were interested. Oh, we're interested, definitely interested. Call right now. Mom, let Dr. Helen use your phone, I said. Benji, it's out of the question. You're allergic to dogs, and I doubt we could afford one. You never ever have to give me an allowance for the rest of my life. I won't go to college. You can use that money for the dog. And I'll get allergy shots. I don't mind. They have those, right, Dr. Helen? You hate shots, Benji. No. I'll learn to love them, Mom. Please, Mom. Pretty please. I'm sorry, Benji. No. Mom, if you don't let me do this, you'll ruin my entire life. Show a little mercy, please. It's true that Benji is allergic to dogs, but there are great allergy shots that he could take, and I'm sure he could then tolerate having a dog around, Dr. Helen said. See, Mom, I was right. Please, please, please. So those are our only two options, the world's ugliest helmet or a dog? What if we just bubble wrapped it, my dad said. Normally I'd laugh at this because the idea of my mom and dad bubble wrapping me every morning was pretty funny. But I didn't even crack a smile. Dad, stop joking around. This is serious. Like life and death serious. And by life and death serious, I'm talking about my life and my death. Dr. Helen told me I should at least try the helmet on because perhaps it wasn't as bad as it looked. I was about to say no, but I knew that being difficult was no way to get my parents to stay agreeable. The plan was to make them understand how horrible it was, and then they'd do the right thing. After Dr. Helen strapped the helmet onto my head, I could tell right away by the expression on all their faces that it was not only as bad as I thought it was, it was actually worse. Mom, hand me a mirror, please. She reluctantly handed over a tiny mirror, and let's just say, even though it was a teeny tiny mirror, I could still see that me wearing the helmet was pretty much the worst thing ever. Remember how I said I tend to faint a lot? Well, it usually starts with me feeling warm, and then the room spins, and then whammo, I crumple to the floor. But I always wake up like a second or two later, good as new. The reason I'm telling you this now is because as I stared at my horrific reflection in the mirror, I started to get warm. The room began to spin, and before I could sit down again, I fainted. I guess my mom caught me because when I opened my eyes two seconds later, I was in my mom's arms and I was sitting on her lap. I looked up at her and without missing a beat said, Mom, I will not wear this helmet. I struggled to get out of her lap as I realized it's hard to make serious demands while sitting in my mom's lap like a little kid. So either I get a therapy dog or we're going to have to roll the dice with whatever might happen if I have another episode. I mean, there's a chance I'll never have another one, right, Dr. Helen? Maybe it was just a fluke. And that's where we'll stop today. Hopefully it didn't glitch out too bad for you. I think there's some internet connectivity issues going on, but you will find out if Benji has to wear the helmet or if he's getting the dog tomorrow. 
Thanks for listening, kids. Don't forget to do this, please. Please do this. Thank you. Bye.